Hello everybody and welcome back to another brand new video here on my channel. So in today's video guys what we're going to be discussing is a, a review from Eurogamer and I'm just going to be reading through their review of The Crew 2. So this obviously is a preview of The Crew 2 that um, they have been uh, given by Ubisoft the developers and what I'm going to be giving over in this video is what's been happening in this uh, kind of demo beta kind of phase of what they've been given. I'm not sure if what they were given is actually the entire finished full game. Uh, I'm not sure, but here and there I'll be putting some uh, screenshots here and there as well of what they've provided as well. So obviously all credit for this guys goes to uh, Eurogamer. If you'd like to go and check it out for yourself, go ahead and click on the link in the description. So guys, what we're going to do is we're going to go straight into it and say that um, they have a time for uh, the crew too. They had a little bit of time with it. And um, basically all they could do is, basically whatever they want I think, um, they can travel wherever they like to, they can drive whatever they want, fly whatever they want, and uh, control whatever they'd like. Um, I think it might have been kind of limited to a certain area, I'm not entirely sure. But what I'm going to do guys is go through uh, the review that they've got, and uh, hopefully you guys do enjoy it. So, here we go. The Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 um, is sports car obviously is um, capable of exceeding 300 kilometers per hour on asphalt. And if you think that's impressive, wait until you see how fast it travels when it's plummeting uncontrollably through the atmosphere from a few miles up. As their time with the Crew 2 draws to a close, they turn their stunt plane skyward and hit the nitrous. Rain speckles the camera, clouds knit and part with a surly magnificence. I spin the view side on, watching the bright pink plane carve a track across the horizon like a finger running up a dirty window pane. All the while, hood notifications drip from the fuselage as the game steadily translates various unintended feats of uh, aeronautics, uh, a lazy corkscrew, a second of knife flight into points and multipliers. So after a moment, the grey peels back and they emerge into the evening blue, tendrils of cloud brushing the wings in that horrifying, seductive way that makes you want to climb out and wade through them. They perform the loop-de-loop, -the, -loop, the scoring systems go nuts, and sit back to enjoy the sights from inside the cockpit, wind rattling the flame. There are a few excitable seconds of freefall and a muted thud, and we're back inside the uh, outskirts of Miami, skidding through swamplands. Though the lovable madness at the heart of the crew to an open world racer with high fidelity physics which let you, lets you smash cars into Florida like meteors without so much popping as an airbag. There's a levity to Ivory Tower's sequel that does go a long way. A festival spirit that carries across the game's world aesthetic and interface, spicing up what is already fairly absorbing range of vehicles and racing styles. Broadly, it's the same game as 2014's original The Crew, giving you the run of a scaled-down United States that has been cheerfully wiped clean of people and their problems, its freeways, canyons, monuments and alleys reworked into a gigantic playground for private transport. It's the kind of place Google's driverless cars dream of going to when they're scrapped. The city layouts have been rebuilt from scratch, but this remained a landscape bristling with challenges and distractions, a thoroughly instrumentalised environment in which you seldom pass 10 seconds without triggering a multiplier. Won a circuit race? Congratulations, there's your payout. Acc accidentally launch yourself from a rooftop into oncoming traffic after missing a turn? Fill your boots. There are other players abroad in the world too, all busy beating events and setting records that are dropped into your session, which creates a steady buzz of competition, even though should you, um should you decide to play through the whole thing alone. The key difference is that where the first game promised freedom only to plunge your head into an RPG levelling uh, trough and a weak source gangster plot, The Crew 2 is very much about living in the moment. The premise does work a lot here. So, rather than a, uh, a grindy retreat of the Fast and the Furious, this is purely and simply a motorsport game, dedicated to the joy of hurling a gleaming machine across a receptive landscape. It's an ethos that deserves more interrogation, so they are curious to explore what values are revealed in the transformation of the US cities into places where dirt bikes and pickup trucks may run amok, but you can't deny its charm. You see the lighter touch, especially in your menu design. A heady plate of clean whites, hot pinks and sizzling yellows that immediately put me in the mind of Horizon. You see it too, in how rewards from events now manifest in-game as tumbling loot canisters coloured by rarity from green to purple. You can see it, of course, in the ability to shapeshift into any car, boat or plane you've unlocked with a single click. The addition of water-based and airborne vehicles has obliged a full overhaul of the crew's engine, which now sports a vastly more robust physics system, longer draw distances and any number of beautiful atmospheric effects. More importantly, perhaps the uh, morphing mechanic together with, together 
with a returning all-powerful fast travel option both creates more variety and encourages you to make the most of it. One moment you're hurling a powerboat through the twists of jungle, threading bridge posts and skimming across low mounds of vegetation to chop a few seconds off the corners, and the next you're ha hacking ramps astride a dirt bike in California, or flying through hoops in the biplane over New York. The first game's controversial levelling elements are still very prominent, in fairness each proper racing event has a recommended overall vehicle level. The sum of all the parts you have equipped, and if the game no longer brute forces defeat via rubber banding AI when you're under leveled, you'll still need to grind for parts on occasion. It was hard to get a sense of the time commitment involved during their session because they were handed a bunch of tricked out rides from the off. Similarly, I'm a little unsure how the handling will perform when you aren't driving something that has been customised to showcase the game, but it just seemed a vast improvement. The cars, ranging from rumbling Dodge Challengers to two supersonic F1 drag racers, feel less floaty than before, more predictable on the corners and less prone to oversteer, though collisions remain strangely ethereal, with vehicles sliding off each other like well-greased wrestlers. There's now much more um, a difference to how the chandling changes across surface types too. Bring a Porsche 911 GT3 to a muddy canyon race and you'll definitely struggle. The planes and boats are more primitive however, with around half to a third the number of physics parameters per craft. The game's water is a delight to wrestle with, you'll feel the impact of your opponent's wake on the steering, and the glories of flight speak for themselves. But there are a few notable clutches where players' convenience and fidelity don't quite agree, such as being able to take off more or less from standstill. Um, the bikes, finally, obviously, are drivable enough to somewhat hilarious, pinging yourself all over the place as the game discreetly works to keep your rider upright while you do your utmost to flip yourself 180 degrees. It still feels like more like a car's world than a full vehicle sandbox in short, with planes, bikes and boats filling in as supporting acts. Among the crews to quieter touches guys are its hub spaces, sprawling apartments and garages where you can wander around in first person drooling over the shiny hot rods in your possession and fiddling with their innards. There appears to be one of these hubs for each major city, and rather brilliantly they have a real time presence in the world. Gaze out across the New York's coast and as the sun rises you might spot a few of your online friends racing down the dock in powerboats. It's the mark of the game that has learnt to savour the spectacle of itself, even, that it, even as it uh, automatically translates that spectacle into points and parts, a game that has set aside time to relish its own liveliness. The Crew 2 is probably more of a reboot than a sequel, and retains at least a few of its predecessor's sins. However, nonetheless, it feels like Ivory Tower has unearthed a kind of magic here, which the original game never quite discovered. So that's the preview that I had for you today, guys. Um, thanks a lot for uh, Eurogamer uh, for posting this, and uh, obviously, guys, go ahead and check them out in the description. But anyway, guys, that is it for me in today's video. I would like to know uh, down there in the comment section below what you guys think about this uh, garage system and uh, apartment system, as well as the physics as well. What did you think about the normal crew and how they will be different in this game? But anyway, guys, that is it for me in today's video, and I did hope you enjoy it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you over in my next video, guys. So I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.